Considering that the top performing video on the channel was Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, thank you everyone, we thought it was time to go on a few more Lego Star Wars Platinum journeys, and I decided to go for the Force Awakens Platinum because it's the shortest one that I can squeeze into a busy schedule. Lego and Star Wars is just a winning combination. This Platinum trophy requires 49 trophies prior to the Platinum, and they're what you would normally expect from a Lego game, 100% completion and some random funny miscellaneous trophies. Although this is based on one of the worst Star Wars films, it's still a fantastic game, and it reminded me a lot of the Skywalker Saga, which I loved. Thank you to everyone as always, and a special thank you to the NC Collective for all your support. Now let's get straight into it as we travel to Endor for our prologue. At least the game starts off with an amazing Star Wars movie. This is basically the tutorial but there's still a red brick and 10 mini kits to earn, along with earning true Jedi status too. I managed to grab the first red brick with ease, which was a nice change because usually these come later when you have to go back on free play to mop up the collectibles. In this LEGO game, when you build things to allow you to progress, you are presented with multiple choices and sometimes the other builds can allow you to reach collectibles. In this case, it would allow me to reach that first red brick and also grab myself my first trophy for disassembling and rebuilding it again. You must unlearn what you have learned. I then moved on to a mechanic I hadn't really experienced yet in a LEGO game, an event called a blaster battle. These were cover shooter segments that were honestly a lot of fun and a welcome addition for me. Nothing like blasting tons of stormtroopers away. I also managed to grab myself a bunch of trophies with this first one. Oh nice. Oh that's sick. Bam 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 bam. If I miss loads there's no trophy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> stormtrooper syndrome. I thought I saw something like that. Miss ten times in a blaster battle. So this is a blaster battle. Gotcha. Pew, 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 pew. Oh, quick on the draw. Woohoo! Quick on the draw. And a blaster battle have Han Solo defeat a character who's preparing an attack. Ah, nice. Unique one for Han. Ow. Woohoo! Yay! They're shooting at both of us. They're shooting at both of us. Oh my God! So many trophies. Complete a blaster battle. Oh, okay. Nice. I like those, they're really cool. I hijacked an ATST and proceeded to annihilate more stormtroopers for another nice easy trophy. Oh, we need more troops. We need more troops. What is this for? Defeat 50 stormtroopers. Wow. That's it, really? <laughs> easy, easy, easy trophy. During the same level, I then got a taste for space battles, which are amazing. I always enjoy stuff like this, just like in the Skywalker saga. Fighting alongside the rebels, I destroyed the Death Star with torpedoes and saved the day. Then we partied all night long with the Ewoks and I was finally awarded my trophy for completing the prologue, and also a second trophy for achieving true Jedi status in my first level, breaking in the trophies already. Now I was finally starting the Force Awakens story, starting off with the Assault on Jakku, where we have Poe Dameron, Stormtrooper Finn, Kylo Ren and Captain Phasma. During a blaster battle I earned myself another trophy that should really have been given to me during the prologue. And down you go, the arshy blows. Yay! Ooh, I'm getting pretty good at this. Nice job! I'm getting pretty good at this. Play a blaster battle without dying. But that's nice and easy. I didn't die in the first one though. What? Oh well, not complaining. Kylo Ren appears on the scene and we get to see the Lego variation of the frozen blaster bolt scene, which is pretty damn cool. And that's chapter one over and done with for the next trophy. The next chapter had me playing as FN2187, which is the terrible character Finn, and also as Poe Dameron as they shoot their way through an army of stormtroopers with the aim to escape the First Order by stealing a TIE fighter. This is a really cool level that goes from blaster battles to dogfighting in space and destroying a cruiser, to then transitioning planet side to Rey while she travels across sand dunes to scavenge scrap from fallen star destroyers with her new companion BB-8. Once you make your way through this ship using their various abilities, that's chapter 2 done for the trophy. Classified. I could then explore the open world areas for the first time and could now use Ray's speeder whenever I wanted. There are lots of collectibles and missions to complete in the game's open world areas. I tried to stay on track and continued with the story first though, escaping the First Order once again and leaving Jakku in the legendary Millennium Falcon. The garbage will do! Now I could wander around the Millennium Falcon as it serves as a small open world area with some collectibles and missions inside. Then after fannying around for a bit and fixing up the ship, I could then begin chapter 4, enter Han Solo and Chewie. This chapter is a lot of fun and one of the better parts from the film, escaping the Raftars that Han has been smuggling. After loads of puzzles and taking down Raftars, we can finally leave this ship and that also gives me the trophy for completing chapter 4. 
What was the second time? The gang then travels to Takodana to visit Mars's castle, where Rey takes a trip to the basement and discovers Anakin's lightsaber. Of course, in Lego fashion, this means there's tons of puzzles to complete before we can reach our objective. This chapter is a fairly simple one, and not before long, I had made my way to the bottom of the castle to complete chapter 5 and grab that trophy. I'm looking at the eyes of a man who wants to run. In the next chapter, Mars's castle gets attacked by the First Order, and this proves to be a perfect opportunity to grab the trophy for destroying 100 TIE Fighters, another easy but fun trophy. Meanwhile, on the ground, Kylo Ren lands and takes Rey captive to learn about the location of the map leading to Luke Skywalker. After this defense of Mars's castle, the chapter ends for yet another trophy. Takodana has its own open world area, so I explored for a while and grabbed a few collectibles to save me a bit of grinding later, and then I could progress to Dakar for the next story chapter. I could now have C-3PO and BB-8 both in my party so I could get a random trophy for attempting to use a protocol droid panel with the wrong type of droid. These aren't the droids you're looking for. After helping the Resistance gear up for an attack on the Starkiller base, that was Chapter 7, done and dusted for the trophy. Then for Chapter 8, Chewie and Finn took on Captain Phasma and won, leading to that chapter's trophy. With this chapter completed, I just needed to finish two more chapters and the epilogue, then I could focus on adventure levels and clean up. Is there a garbage chute? Back to the really fun stuff, with Poe in an X-Wing destroying TIE Fighters, whilst Rey is trying to test her power with the Force and manages to use Jedi mind tricks on a Stormtrooper to escape. This Stormtrooper in the film is played by Daniel Craig. Why they didn't call him FN007 is beyond me. They missed a trick there. Then before the chapter ends, the worst part of the film happens, as Kylo kills his own father, the man, the myth, the legend, Han Solo. This just sucks, but that's another chapter down. My friend's got a bag full of explosives. Now we have the battle in the snow with Finn, Rey, and Kylo. I thought all the voices were taken from the film, but they actually added some funny voice lines of their own. Could just walk over and pick it up, but that wouldn't look as cool. <laughs> Victory in this battle went to the Resistance, as they blow up the base and celebrate as usual, thus ending the main story at chapter 10. Now I just had the epilogue on Luke's island to complete, and then I was onto the grinding part of this journey. It belongs to me. Luke's Island is a fairly short but fun level to complete. Just climb all the way up and conquer the puzzles until you bump into Hobo Luke standing at the top. Once complete, I earned a trophy and I also got a shiny gold trophy on top of that, but now having completed the entire story. That's a relief. Now onto the cleanup. The game kindly showed me my completion and reminded me that the job was nowhere near completed. I started my cleanup with the Millennium Falcon, the collectibles on board and the associated missions, starting with a gold brick for completing the Dejaric Battle minigame. I found that this was such a ridiculous method for earning so many studs too. With quite a lot of characters amassed, I could now grab a few different miscellaneous trophies for using different characters. One for killing Kylo as Darth Vader, another for having Kylo and Han Solo in the same party, and a third for playing as Unkar Plutt whilst aboard the Millennium Falcon. Now it was time for Adventure Levels, a really nice addition to the game which lets you play as side characters or experience events that happened off screen or in the comics. Each one awards you with a trophy for completing it, but all of these levels also contain red bricks and mini kits for that 100% completion. I completed the Raftar hunting level here for its trophy. You used to have a bigger crew. Then I stopped by the character creation for LEGO's easiest trophy that's in most LEGO games. There are 35 carbonite bricks in this game which also act as gold bricks and they're a really great feature. You can bring them to this area at the resistance base and you can unlock classic characters or characters that aren't present in this film. All of them are needed for 100% but for now I just needed classic Han so I could grab another miscellaneous trophy on board the Millennium Falcon for playing as classic Han and Chewie at the same time. Chewie, we're home. I went back to completing adventure levels and this next one was very important because I would unlock Admiral Akbar. He has the ability to jump into water containing mini kits, so I really needed to add him to my roster before going back and doing free play on every level. 
Completing this mission, named Poe to the Rescue, I was awarded the Admiral and my trophy. Never tell me the odds. Whilst I was here, I went into the Millennium Falcon mission on free play and managed to collect all mini kits for a trophy. That's the first level finished to 100%. The next adventure level was brilliant. It had me playing as Captain Phasma and Kylo Ren, destroying the resistant scum. The combat in this game lets you store up a special ability that is different for different classes and characters. And Kylo can freeze blaster bolts just like in the film. Doing so netted me a trophy for my troubles. Then later on, for completing this level, I was awarded a bronze trophy, as per usual. It's a trap! Another miscellaneous trophy I had my eyes on was for completing a level whilst playing as Chewie and Mars. This level bugged for me and I couldn't progress, but luckily just leaving the level seemed to work and I was awarded the trophy. Phew! The next trophy I got was a reference to Kylo Ren losing his shit and smashing the place up with his lightsaber. I had to destroy 7 computer panels in chapter 8, but it could sometimes prove to be a pain because if enemies destroyed the panels, it wouldn't count. But eventually, after a couple restarts, the trophy was mine. Anything else? Another adventure level next, and this time playing as Captain Phasma and FM2199, the stormtrooper with the cool spinning tonfa weapon. I needed to add him to my roster for a miscellaneous trophy too. I needed to select him and Finn in my party, and then kill Finn as FN2199. So as soon as I'd finished this level and gotten that trophy, it was on to the next trophy for beating the living daylights out of Finn. Sorry Finn. I then had to play as the awesome pirates that work for Mars. I genuinely really liked these guys just from this LEGO game. It would be so cool if they got a Clone Wars style series. This was a really good level, awarding me of course with a bronze trophy at the end of it. The final adventure level had me back on Jakku playing as a bounty hunter and Lor San Tekka. This was a fairly quick and fun level which was great for when I had to come back and free play later. Completing this mission not only awarded me with his trophy, but that was all adventure levels completed for a shiny gold trophy. Now it was time for that free play grind, starting off with achieving true Jedi status on every level. This one is very easy on this game, it's almost achievable without stud multipliers. I needed to take a break from story levels, so I decided to do loads of the open world missions and find loads of collectibles. I was bowling with BB-8, zooming around and racing on speeders, diving for treasure with Admiral Akbar, and plenty more. Before I knew it, I'd wrapped up everything on Takodana. I decided to try and complete all of the missions next. Scavenger missions, Bounty Hunter missions, First Order missions, and Resistance missions. There are plenty more, but those are the ones that give you trophies. I went back to Jakku to mop up a lot of these, and on my way I found a trophy opportunity for having a small character wear a Stormtrooper helmet. Short for a stormtrooper? There wasn't that many, but I managed to get round to completing every single scavenger mission with Ray. 60 portions. While still cleaning up Jakku, I managed to finish every single race, which was a shame to be honest, because these were really fun. But at least that's another trophy down. It's a ship that made the castle run in less than 12 parsecs. And then it was over to the resistance base to start cleaning up collectibles over there, starting with bounty hunter missions. What? Why is everyone looking at me? Uh-oh, my cover's blown. There wasn't many of them, but the bounty hunter missions were great fun. It didn't take long to earn that trophy. Yeah, he's no good to me dead. No good to me dead. Next, I was completing my final First Order mission. A First Order member in disguise stole an X-Wing with me, but we ended up destroying the First Order anyway in a really fun mission. Gotta love piloting X-Wings. And the last Resistance mission had me training various soldiers of the Resistance simply by beating the crap out of them. A fun and simple mission as the finale for another trophy. Not long left now and I was grinding out the story missions on free play, grabbing all red bricks and mini kits. The final mission for mini kits ended up being the adventure level where you usually play as Phasma and FN2199. This time I was Dooku and a Wampa. Once I finished the level, the final mini kit registered for my trophy. For getting all of the gold bricks, I unlocked this ridiculously stupid level where you fly around as the Starkiller base destroying hundreds of planets. Once I had finally reached the 1 million stud mark, I was done with this level and could finally claim that sweet gold trophy for 100%. The final trophy needed for the Platinum was for purchasing all of the red bricks, but obviously I had already done that because I just got the 100% completion trophy, right? No. This dumb game has just screwed me out of the Platinum, and it's really depressing. 
but shit happens. Here's a proof that I bought every brick too. It's a known bug apparently after I looked it up, so I've done the requirements for the platinum anyway, just sadly I happened upon this bug as so many others have, and now I have to see this in my trophy list as a grim reminder. Thanks for watching though guys, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope to see you very soon. Happy grinding!